So Joseph was sold for pieces of silver by his brothers, right? And then he was handed over to the Gentiles, and then later he's falsely accused. And this guy named Potiphar, who's the captain of the guard, this Pontius Pilate type, sends him down to the place of judgment, the place of the condemned, where the king's prisoners were confined. And it was down there that two, right, two were down there, brought down there with him. The scripture tells us. And what happens? He interprets what is going to happen to him through their dreams. In three days, three days, guys, one of them is restored to the king and lives. The other one is cursed to death. What does that remind you of? Oh, that's right. Jesus on the cross. Oh my, this is going to be so good. I'm so excited, you guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You're not going to miss anything because right now we're in Joseph and we are talking about how Joseph is a picture of Jesus and how you can use the Old Testament to understand the New Testament, especially books like Revelation. So let's get into it. Here we go, you guys. This is so exciting. All right. So Joseph, he was numbered with the transgressors. That's an Isaiah 53 scripture, by the way, and we're going to look into that. So remember the last episode, he was put in chains, and we know that Psalm 105 talks about him him being in irons and chains of iron, speaking of Joseph. So there's a huge picture in there in Psalm 105 as well. But Isaiah 53 says this. It says that because he poured out his soul to death... And was numbered with the transgressors. Everybody knows that that scripture speaks of Jesus. In fact, the New Testament quotes that as speaking about Jesus being crucified with the two criminals, right? So let's keep going. This is so good, you guys. I love this. So here's the crosses. There's three. Remember, Jesus was in the center cross, and there was criminals on both sides of him. Right? So then in Genesis 39, this is what we see in Joseph's story. The place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison, this place of judgment, this place of the condemned. That's where Joseph is. That was our last chapter. Now let's get into this right right now in chapter 40. We saw this. We saw that this Pontius Pilate uh, guy releases Barabbas, who was the true criminal, the guilty one, and he has Jesus crucified. We are the picture of this guilty one, and we were set free. He was set free, and we are too. Why? Because Jesus was condemned. Big stuff, guys. Big time stuff. So Genesis 40, it says here, it says, Then it came about after these things that the cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt offended, offended their Lord, that scripture says, the king of Egypt. Okay, let's go. Keep going. Verse 2. And Pharaoh was furious with his two criminals, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. So he put them in confinement in the house of the captain of the bodyguard in the prison, the same place where Joseph was imprisoned, that place of the condemned, right? That's what we see, guys. So here we're looking at three crosses on a hill, on that hill far away. It was in Jerusalem. It was just west of the temple. And you could see three crosses, that place called Golgotha, the place of the skull where Jesus was crucified. That's what we're seeing in Joseph's story. And then in verse 4, it says, And the captain of the bodyguard put Joseph in charge of them, and and they were in confinement for some time. Both had a dream the same night, each man with his own dream and each dream with its own interpretation. When Joseph came to them in the morning and saw them, behold, they were dejected. They were sad. They were, they were troubled by these dreams, right? That's, that's the picture we're seeing here. And then verse 12, we'll skip ahead to verse 12. It says, then Joseph said to him, so he's, the cupbearer just told Joseph what his dream was, and now Joseph is interpreting it. First he says, are not dreams interpreted or the the interpretation come from God. So he gives God glory as he is about to interpret the dream to this this cupbearer, the first one. So it says here, then Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation of it. 
The three branches are three days. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office. In other words, you will be restored to life. You're not going to be put to death. And you will put Pharaoh's cup into his hand, as in your former practice when you were his cupbearer. Isn't that great? So he's going to go serve the king once again. He's being restored. And then verse 14 says, Only keep me in mind, Joseph said to him. In other words, remember me when you're in that kingdom. Remember me, Joseph says. Keep me in mind when it goes well for you. And please do not do me kindness by mentioning me to Pharaoh, to the king, right? Who you sits on the throne and get me out of this prison. Doesn't that ring a bell to you? When Jesus was on that cross, there was two criminals with him, and he says something to one of them, right? Well, let's look at it. Let's look at it right now. Let's see what he says. Luke chapter 23, that one criminal, he said this, and he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, he said, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus told him he would be restored to life, right? And then Joseph, let's go back. So so let's talk about that real quick because Jesus tells this guy who says in some interpretations, Lord, Lord, remember me in your kingdom or Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. And he says, truly, I say to you this day, you will be with me in paradise. I love what Billy Graham said one time. He said that I'm not going to heaven because I've preached to thousands and I've prayed more and read my Bible more. No, I'm going to heaven just like that criminal on the cross who said, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Have you given your life to Jesus? Have you asked Jesus to remember you in his kingdom? Have you called him Lord? Have you repented? Because that guy on the cross even repented before that. He said, we deserve what we're getting. This is our due punishment to that other, as he rebuked the other criminal on the cross. And then he said, Lord, he called Jesus Lord. And he said, remember me. It's that simple, you guys. That simple. He did not have to get baptized. He did not uh, have to go through some kind of a rule book or do all these check check off lists of things that do. No, he talked to Jesus, and you can too. You can talk to him, repent of your sins. That means turn from your sin and admit your sin or turn from your sin and then ask him to forgive you and remember you, and he will, just like that criminal on the cross. It's that simple. Jesus did the heavy lifting on the cross so you don't have to. And at the end of this teaching, I will give you an opportunity to pray and receive Jesus into your heart just like that criminal did. And you, my friend, you will be in paradise with God forever. That's a promise. Scripture says it. It's a promise from Scripture. All right, let's get back into the presentation. So Genesis 40, we're back into it here. Verse 15, for Joseph continues, for I was in fact kidnapped from the land of the Hebrews. Remember, Jesus was handed over to the Gentiles, right? And even here, I have done nothing that they should have put me into this dungeon, right? This place of the condemned. Jesus didn't do anything wrong, but he was on the cross. And that criminal, the one that was saved, said this, we, talking to that other criminal as he rebuked him, he said, we are receiving what we deserve for our crimes, but this man has done nothing wrong. Now, wait a minute. What did Joseph just say? Joseph just says that that I've done nothing that they should put me in this dungeon. So we're seeing the, the same picture of what Jesus' story is, because Joseph is a type and a picture of Jesus Christ. And then Genesis 40 continues, And even here I have done nothing that they should put me down into this dungeon. I was just wanted to reiterate that. And then verse 16, Then we see the chief baker, right? So when the chief baker saw that he had interpreted favorably, right, he gave a good favorable interpretation to the cupbearer, he said to Joseph, I also saw in my dream. So he had a dream too, right? And then Joseph interprets to him in verse 18. He says, then Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation, the three baskets, there was three baskets on his head. The three baskets are three days. 
Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from you and and will hang you on a wooden post, and the birds will eat your eat the flesh off of you. On a wooden post? What does that remind you of? It's the picture of the cross. So this guy on the cross, he's going to bear that cross forever because he did not ask Jesus to forgive him and, and call him Lord and, and ask him to remember him. So he's bearing his own cross. He doesn't want to... Jesus did the heavy lifting on the cross for you and for me and for anyone who would receive him and believe in him and trust him and follow him. But this guy didn't confess. And, the, and the, here we're seeing the cupbearer as that other criminal on the cross who was cursed. That's what we're seeing, you guys. Pretty serious stuff, really. It really is. So the birds will eat of your flesh. In other words, he is cursed. Birds always refer to a curse in scriptures. So he is going to go to this place of torment, of burning and darkness, loneliness, suffering. Jesus described it as a place of gnashing of the teeth. And I do want to talk about recently there was the Maui fire, and there was a survivor of that, this Hawaiian guy, and he described it as hell, his own words. He said it was hell. He said people were screaming. He was, he was trying to escape, get the flames running away. He said it was darkness. He could barely see anything. He was choking. His mouth was dry. He was hot. And he, the worst part, he said, was hearing other people screaming and suffering and dying. And nobody, Jesus doesn't want you to go to hell. That's why he died on the cross. Hell was designed for Satan and his minions. But if you choose to go there and refuse Jesus, then God's given you what you want. But if you want to live and have peace with God and be in paradise, you can have that. Jesus did the heavy lifting on the cross so you could be saved, my friend. You, yes, you. All right, let's continue, guys. Here we are. But the other criminal, where did he go? He went to paradise with Jesus and those who are there with Jesus. It's a beautiful place. So Isaiah 53 said, Because he poured out his soul to death and he was and was numbered with the transgressors, that were that's what we're seeing in this episode, right? The place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison. That's Joseph's scripture right there, right? He was there in the prison. He was there in that place of the contempt. Joseph being a picture of Jesus. Here it is, guys. This is what we're seeing in Genesis 40. We're seeing the other two that were on the cross with Jesus. And Jesus... It says here that, that in the Bible, it says that he went down to the place of Sheol. But, but the Lord, but God didn't leave him down in that place of Sheol. He was raised up out of that place. And this picture just shows it well because there was the belief in the Old Testament. And Jesus even gave a story of it. But he didn't say it was a parable. I think it may have been true. He was just stating something that was real. And that is... That, like he said, Jonah, just as Jonah went down into the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, so too, he said, will the Son of Man go down into the heart of the earth, which in those days they understood as Abraham's bosom or Gehenna. It was a place down in Sheol where the dead would go before Jesus was raised from the dead. And there was one side, which was Abraham's bosom, which was Abraham, the paradise where Abraham was. And then there was another side, which was Gehenna, the place of torture and hell and torment and flames, right? Which is the precursor for hell. So Jesus told about Lazarus, the poor man, Lazarus, and the rich man. And the rich man ignored this poor man all the days of his life, ignored him and wouldn't even give him anything and had parties and had a great life with his rich friends and Lazarus and then they but they both died and Lazarus was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom Jesus said which is the place of paradise but the other one was put down in that place of torment 
And Jesus described this, not as a parable, but something real. And that rich man cried out from that place of torment, saying to Lazarus, to, to just have Lazarus, he said to Abraham, please have Lazarus just dip his finger in that water to cool my tongue. And then he said, and, and please warn my, my brothers about this place. But no. And, and Abraham even said, even if someone were raised up from the dead to tell them, they still wouldn't believe. And that's how it is for a lot of people. They refuse to believe. Their hearts are hard. But you have an opportunity, my friend. Your heart is not hard yet. Allow God to keep your heart soft. Ask him to soften your heart even more, to receive him so you could be saved. It could be the greatest moment of your life. It was for me. And I want you to be saved if you're not. So you can do that prayer here in a little bit. Let's look at that presentation one more time. So the heart of the earth, you guys. It's very mysterious, but somewhere there was this place uh, where the souls were held up before Jesus' resurrection. It's called Abraham's bosom or Hades or Sheol. So Luke 23 says, And he was saying, remember that criminal said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And that's all you have to say too, my friend. You could just simply say, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. I'm a sinner. Please forgive me and remember me. That's how you're saved, my friend. It's really simple. All right. Luke 23 continued. And he said to him, Jesus said this, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Paradise. Wow. (laughs) That's what's promised to us. So Isaiah 53 said, Yet he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. He bore the sin of many, and he makes intercession for the transgressors. Who are the transgressors? Me, I'm a sinner. You, if you're honest, you're a sinner too. We are in need. In need of what, you might be saying? In need of God's forgiveness. In need of God's forgiveness. And if this is speaking to your heart, my friend, if you would like to receive Jesus to be born again as a new creation under God, in God, in Christ, in the Messiah, living in him, and him living in you, born again, new life, and then to live forever with him in paradise, not in torment. Everybody's going to live forever, by the way. You can live forever in torment, away from God, getting exactly what you want, a world without Jesus and without God and his people, which is a place of torment and outer darkness, or in the presence of God, which is a place of light and paradise and and goodness and fellowship, the good things. That could be for you, my friend. And that speaks to your heart. If you'd like to receive Jesus, you're asking him to come into your life to be ruler and king over you and over your life. You can do that right now. You could say this simple prayer. Just repeat these words after me. You ready? All right. You you are praying to God, not to me, not to anybody else. This is business between you and God. All right. Repeat these words after me if that speaks to you. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I am sorry for my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. I choose to follow you, Jesus, and I ask you to remember me in your kingdom. I believe that you died on that cross. I believe that in three days you were raised from the dead and you are alive today. And I choose to follow you as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen, my friend. You did the greatest thing you could ever do. And I pray that God will help you. Leave your comment down below. I'd love to pray for you. And God bless you. Hey, don't forget, hit this video playlist right here. You'll see all of the rest of Jesus in the Old Testament. Love you.